going to call the September 26, 2018, Neshoba Regional School Committee meeting to order at 6.05. I want to note that uh, the reason for the five minute delay had to do with um, a snafu with the ability to record the, um, the meeting. So, uh, welcome everyone. Um, Chairman Ramosco was unable to be with us this evening because of a uh, work commitment. So, um, that being said, I would like to start with, um, oops, here we go, uh, uh, to see if there are any citizens' comments. Seeing none, we will move on to the school committee chair updates. I have no updates, and Lorraine didn't pass anything along to me, so we will move to the student representative report. All right, so starting off with sports, the football team is now 3-0 after recently defeating Fitchburg High School at Crawford Field last Friday. Uh, many students and parents came out to support the team in their 32-2 victory. Uh, girls soccer recently defeated Lincoln Sudbury by one point, and girls volleyball improved their record in a 3-0 win against North Middlesex. Girls field hockey hosted their annual game in honor of Michelle Farnsworth last week against what she was at winning with a score of five to zero. Boys soccer lost to Algonquin one to nothing and boys the boys' most recent golf match was postponed due to the weather. Hale Cross Country faced Tingsboro earlier today and tomorrow Florence Sawyer faces Oak Middle School and Luther, Luther Burbank faces Broad Dunstable in their meet that was previously <coughs> rescheduled. So for arts, the Neshoba Pep Band is preparing for the upcoming home football game on Friday where they will pump up the team and hopefully lead them to a victory. Rehearsals for the fall play at Christmas Carol are in full swing. All cast members and parents are very excited to put on what we know will be an amazing show. The Triumph Musical Honor Society has been meeting and preparing for their first Neshoba Coffee House, which auditions were held for last week. At the Coffee House, students will be able to perform music they have prepared in small groups and individual acts in a fun social gathering. Middle school bands and choruses have been practicing in preparation for their concerts that will be held later this year. For events, to start off, Florence Sawyer will have their gold for, Go for Gold Friday this week, where students and staff will wear gold to support awareness for childhood cancer fighters and patients. Luther Burbank is holding a school safety presentation tonight, so parents may learn of the school safety protocols and procedures. Hill Middle School had its back to school dance last Friday where more than 150 students attended. They also had their sixth grade outdoor adventure day today where a team from Project Adventures guided students through a full day of exciting team building exercises. Uh, after school activities for all middle schools are in full swing and the high school will be having an open house tomorrow on the 27th. What an awesome report. I, I mean, I, I just feel so badly that it's not being televised right now because that was an awesome report, and, and just the fact that you know you're, you're bringing so much of the middle school to us as well as the high school, I love it. It's just fabulous. So you you did a really great job tonight. Thank, Thank you. you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate it. I would agree. And Chuck, can you tell me a little bit more? Tell us a little bit more about the coffee house. Is it going to be at the high school? And if they set a, st a date to start it, when um, it'll be? I haven't heard all the details about it. All I know is that they had auditions last week. Um, I assume. It, is it at the I, Bolton I, Main? I was thinking, I believe I heard that. I think it is. Bolton. That would be yeah. cool having it at a coffee house. Yes, yeah, that would be really cool. But um, I know a lot of people who want who have uh, auditioned and made um, put together acts with their um, their friends. And, oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Oh. Um, and what's the organization that runs it? Triam. It's the Musical Honor Society at the. Um, at the high school. And that's awesome. new, right? Last year, yes, I think. They introduced this is their year. yeah, this is their for the first full year, first I guess. Full year. Yeah. yeah. And and I think they're trying to raise money for um, is it give a note found it? Did you read did you see that at all or no, no? I haven't heard about that yeah. at all. Uh, for a, an organization that's, that helps to fund um, different um, music programs and such. I think that's where mm -hmm. some of the funds that they're looking to raise are going to go. But okay. Sounds wonderful. Really and I hope you keep us posted. Yeah, um, I will, definitely. This Sounds was just great. perfect. Thank any, you. Yeah. any other questions? Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Okay. Um, Superintendent's report. 
So I, again, I feel really badly that this is not being televised. And it, it, you've got the weight of the shoulder on, on your shoulders tonight. <laughs> Put up this no story. worries on your part. <laughs> so um, the MCAS data, just so that you, that you know, the MCAS data that, that's uh, still embargoed, I think until, I think tomorrow night at midnight or something like that, the MCAS data is still embargoed. Uh, but of course, our, our administrators um, have access to it and have been reviewing it, looking for trends, uh, looking for areas of strength, areas of challenge, um, what we've done well. Uh, we always give an annual presentation on our MCAS um, and the account level of accountability and all that kind of thing, generally in October. So we'll probably be bringing that right around to you in, in the month of October so you can look forward to that. Um, generally, our teaching and learning crew do that. They do a great job with it. Um, I have a couple of housekeeping items to, to bring up, and I, I, I just put it under housekeeping items because I've kind of talked about this before, and uh, then there's another one or two of these items that are just like every year I kind of go back over this. Uh, so the first one is residency, um, and again, uh, still having some, <coughs> some little issues. I think we've resolved most of the issues. But I think, you know, and it's the first time I've come up against really somebody who said, I really didn't know that these were the rules. I really, I thought my child could just come to school here. And you know, they can't, so I want to say again. <laughs> you put us in an awful place if you don't live in one of our three communities and just decide to drop your child off at one of our schools. It doesn't work that way. Um, and, and one of the things they kind of always have to keep in mind is what, that what they're really doing is also taking money away from a school district where that money should be going, whether it's Hudson or Clinton or, or wherever it is. Thank you. Did you find someone? It's on. They, you can't see that it's on, but I confirmed with them that it is actually on. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, well, we're thrilled. Now I, I take back everything I said about you. Um, so going back to the residency, if you don't live in our three communities right now, we do not have school choice. It is not an option for you to drop your child off at one of our schools right now and expect that we will uh, take them in. Uh, the second thing is just something I bring up every year, uh, the, the second and third thing, emails. Just a reminder that you always want to be cautious about emails. We have this discussion with our administrators and with our teachers as well and with school committee. Just a general reminder that your emails are open for public, um, especially if there's an FOI request or something like that. So you always want to make sure, don't you, please don't use names. Certainly don't ever put a student's name in there. Those just kind of common sense factors, just a reminder uh, that we do that. We do that every year as soon as we come back in the month of September. So this is just my time to remind our, our school committee folks. Um, the last one, again, this is just an FYI every year, bring this up again, the FOI request. Um, our past practice has, has been, certainly since I've been here, that we charge appropriately for FOI requests. And I think sometimes folks forget that, um, but we, we charge the, whatever that going rate is that's, that's levied by the, the state as the rate for us to use, and that's what we use. Um, sometimes I think what people forget about is that if it's something that we we have to pull down from Google Vault. There's another whole process that's involved. It's not as easy as just going in and grabbing the information and handing it over. It doesn't quite work like that. There are some processes that have to be put in place when we do that. And of course, then we have to go back and do any necessary reductions or whatever. So there's always a process in place. The bottom line is it doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a $10 charge or a 50 or a 500 or $2,000 or whatever it is. Uh, people just need to keep that in the back of their mind and we won't change that because you can imagine that if we did then everybody would want everything all the time <laughs> you know so and we generally the other thing too to know is that we never hand over that and until we've received that check so just a couple things I think it's important uh, to emphasize the fact that um, charging appropriately for um, these requests are in state law and as well as the rate, and I'm, I'm aware that it has changed. It's, it's a lot cheaper now than it was maybe five or six years ago. And also um, that I believe our practice is that when people make a request, um, we inform them at the time of what the charge will be That's so correct. they can decide whether to move ahead or, or, not. or, or not. So I just think in terms of the FOIA request, it's important to know those things yeah. that we're not just making things up as we go along. And we didn't, to be honest with you, we, I really didn't run into any real, really major problems mm -hmm. with this. It's just uh, last year, uh, you know, um, 
Actually, I haven't really run into major problems in either year, but every year I could just come forward and just say, okay, remember these basic things. So that, that's all this is, just a general, general reminder about that. Um, the third item, the superintendent and chief's annual Middlesex meeting. So the district attorney, Marion Ryan, and, and uh, her, uh, the, the gentleman who uh, served in the position prior to her, um, did these meetings, and they're fabulous meetings. And it's all the superintendents in Middlesex that come to it, and all of our chiefs. And so, because Middlesex, or because Neshoba is kind of separated between Worcester County and Middlesex, Stowe is the, the only one that goes to the, the Middlesex one. But it's fabulous, and the, the, the takeaways from that are great for the district, not just Stowe. Um, so just so that you know that you were represented uh, this year by, by both our, our fire chief, uh, Chief Landry, and our uh, police chief, Chief Bosworth, as well as uh, uh, Representative Hogan was there and Senator Eldridge was there, and I was there. So it was, we were very well represented at that meeting. It was really, really positive. Um, it was very well attended. And we talked through things about safety. We talked about uh, different initiatives that Middlesex uh, uh, has going right now that we'll be able to tap into. It was really, really positive, really, really good. So I just want to put that put out, that out there and let you know. And, and special thanks to everyone from Stove who attended. It was great. Uh, parent safety meetings. Um, so our last one is right now. It's happening right as we sit here um, in Lancaster. We've held one in uh, Stowe, one in Bolton, and one in Lancaster. In total, uh, uh, you know, if you add up all of the parents uh, across the three, probably around 100 parents in total is how they came out to the, the various meetings. Um, very well received. I, I think one of the things I really appreciated, now I, I was at the Stowe one, uh, Todd is representing us right now in Lancaster and he'll be joining us shortly, um, but there were a lot of really good questions and one of the questions that came out and I thought this is as good a time as any to bring up some of this kind of thing. Uh, one of the parents had uh, had asked me first of all about, um, well, are, aren't there things already in place and have been for 20 years and you just needed to, uh, to redo some of this? It, it's not that simple. We have to make something that's made in Neshoba, something that works for Neshoba values, that works for our schools. So you can take some things, like the flip chart I was, had alluded to that earlier, and you, you take the, the NALMIC um, suggestions and you cross-reference that with what you had previously from 20 years ago, and then you try to make it all match to fit current times. So it, it isn't as easy as saying, oh, there's a flip chart over there, I can just grab that and we can use it. You really have to, to make sure it's tailor-made for Neshoba, for, for everything, the flip chart and everything. So that, that I thought that was a really good question. Another question came out about um, a, a, an incident at the high school last year and they said, well, we, we learned more from the police than we did from the school district and that's exactly true and that's exactly how it has to be. And I think that that's one of the things that I think one of, one of the reasons that our relationship that's so closely linked between our school district and the police department serves our parents well because we can't say some things that the police can say. Now vice versa, there's sometimes, uh, uh, there are other opportunities where we're able to do things that the police can't do, but because of that nice partnership, we're able to capitalize on that. So um, that parent was absolutely right. I was so glad that the question uh, w w was asked because it gave me an opportunity to say, yes, you're absolutely right, and that's exactly how it should play out. Because we can't talk about mental health issues. We can't talk about specific students. We can't talk about that kind of thing. Um, what's on the police blotter is out of my control. You know, so um, so there were. I think the other thing that I really appreciated. There's a, a gentleman at the back that that spoke out uh, again. This is going back to the Stone meeting that said, you know, I think that it's really. And I'm paraphrasing him, so I hope he's not offended by this tonight. But he he said this is something that we have to all look at as a community. This is not a school district issue. This is not a police issue. This is this is not you know a parent. This is all of our issue. I was very respectful of some of the comments that he made that night too. So I would say all in all, I think the parent safety meetings went very, very well. One of the uh, final questions I'll bring up tonight is um, that was asked was, what about training the, the students now? Like where do we where do we go next, right? And um, so I, I, and my thing was I didn't want to do anything until we went to the parents first. And so here's where we're at. 
So I think you'll see us now start to make a move to the high school and uh, see if we can't start there and uh, do some Alice training with the high school. We've talked through a plan, uh, Principal Dean Domenico and I, of what that might look like. So I think that we're pretty close to that. I think that I'm comfortable right now with moving something um, a little bit more watered down though for our, our grades seven and eights. So, you know, I think that we can do something there um, a, as well. The lower grades though, um, you know, you really are looking at, you need to listen to the adult in the room. The adult in the room knows the information, that's where you need to be taking your lead as a student, you know. Whereas the older students can help to do the barricading or to do the whatever. So um, so you'll see that, that will be our next phase moving into the month of October. Um, is there anything else? I think that's probably it for the safety meetings. Anyway, a special thanks to, to everyone who came out. Special thanks especially Lisa Gulbicki, who's done so much work in this area, and our again, our local um, law enforcement and fire officials who work so closely with us. So that's just just really a special, special gift that we've got right now. Um, the last item, um, not nearly as much fun, of course, is budget, <laughs> FY20. Uh, Pat's already starting their meetings with the administrators as they start to take a look to next year. The anticipated costs that we know that we can see coming, the contractual costs, uh, we start to lay those what-if pictures now. And those are lengthy. Like, it's, a, it's a lot to create um, that, especially with the contractual obligations and going through every single staff member and working it all through. Um, it, it takes a lot of time to do that. So we're starting to work in that area, um, and, and I think that uh, I think we'll be on target to come up with a number for you for December. But we all know that that's not the number that we'll end up with, but that'll say, here's where we're at right now. So I think those were my key points tonight. Any, any questions on any of this? No? Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Brooke. So now we will have um, the business and operations report. If you would join us, Pat. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can you bring up um, <coughs> So I have for you the um, July Treasurer's Report from our District Treasurer. Um, as you can see, for the month of July, uh, our revenue was down a little bit, but it's just out of the fiscal year. And as you can see, if you can scroll to the next one. You can see that the revenue has started to come in from the state and from the local communities in the month of August. Um, does anybody have any questions? Any to where, where, where is that grant money distributed? In, in what, what accounts or are they just, anytime there's an increase, that's, that's money from the state. Yeah, I'm assuming that when, I'm, when I say money from the state, that would be um, a, a piece of our Chapter 70 money. Right. It could be grant funds. Right. Okay, so anything we'll, from the state. So anything, and, and it's all sort of distributed within these accounts here. It's it it, it comes in through MMDT. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for Pat? Nope. Okay. So we'll go to the next. Okay. So are you going to uh, present about the donation? Yes. The high school. <coughs> Okay. Yes. So, um, I have a letter here to um, inform you that AIS Inc., located in Lemonster, Massachusetts, has partnered with the Neshova Regional High School on a design thinking classroom redesign project under the direction of Mary Marotta. Uh, the cost of um, the donated items is, is forty-two hundred dollars. Uh, the items uh, meet all codes, if anybody was concerned about that. And um, this letter is from the principal, Paul D. Domenico. And are those the, the seats at the bottom? At the bottom, yes. It's their seats and tables. Oh my goodness. Do they, they're waiting for us to approve the donation so they yes. can acquire them? Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Pat about the donation? I move that we approve the uh, accepting the donation from AIS. 
uh, to the high school for the uh, new, new style seating. At the amount of? At the amount of $4,200. Okay, second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Okay, wow. This looks really cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this going to be in a classroom at the high school? Yes, I believe yes. that's exactly where it's going. Yeah. Wow. She's doing a lot of really, Mary's doing a lot of interesting work in this particular area with this particular company. It's really interesting to watch it unfold right now. It would be good to have, like, at some point, maybe at the end of the year, to see what they've done this mm -hmm. year. Um, because this is exciting. They, they were involved, the students were involved in a design project, and, and uh, we should really have her come in and I'd talk love about to it. See that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, then we have a Yale Middle School donation. Right, actually we have two donations. Oh, here. okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, uh, from Principal Kyle Grady at the Hale Middle School. He's uh, requesting the approval to accept two separate donations mm -hmm. on behalf of, of his middle school there. Um, the first donation is from a Stoke Parent Teacher Organization and they've offered to contribute $2,500 toward the purchase and installation of a new smart board and projector in their digital literacy and computer science classroom. Um, I'm grateful to be aligned with the Stoke PTO and they are a motivated group who are dedicated to the success of our students. So there are two here, so. So we should do one at, one at, one at, time. One we'll at, one at a time. Okay, so with regard to the first um, uh, donation? $2,500. I move that we accept the donation from the Stowe PTO in the amount of $2,500. For? For the for electronic board and the smart board and projector for the digital program. Second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? All in favor? <coughs> okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> the second donation? The second donation is from the Stowe resident, Mr. Russ Fitch. Mr. Fitch has offered to donate his upright piano to our music program. The piano was his late wife's and one that he remembers her playing with great joy. The piano will help us to expand our after school music program. I move that we accept the donation from Mr. Russ Fitch of a piano to an upright piano to be used in the after school music program and as a backup for other performances. Second. Second. Please. Any questions? Discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. That's so, nice. That's so exciting. It really is. It's really That's neat when you see this happen. Very, very appreciative. Okay. So, um, the next item of new business is a presentation of the district communication plan. Um, after we um, see the communication plan, we will um, uh, review the superintendent's goals for the upcoming year. And I just want to mention that one of the goals that you will see has to do with communication and the creation of the plan. So this is the plan. This is the plan. <laughs> Present it. Do we have handouts? Is it all in there? Should be all there. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 And actually, I'll 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 tee it up to to start, and then we'll we'll turn it over to. Okay. Uh, just yep. Yeah. So just um, for clarity's sake, there is a Prezi presentation that Todd is going to show us. But in your packet is sort of like the 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 specifics of it. So if, as he's showing us that, if you want more detail, you can look at the um, presentation that's in the packet. I'm done? Okay. <laughs> so just uh, to, to tee it up a little bit before we, we turn it over to give some background, some context to this. So when I first came into the district, um, it, was, it was noted that the communication was an area that was lacking in a number of, at a number of different levels. And then as we went through the year, uh, we could see that there were some, some other things that were coming up that were cropping up. And we thought, you know what, we, we really need to get a different handle on this. It was mentioned in my um, evaluation, I think, that year as well. And so we took a look and we said, okay, so this upcoming year, which was last year, what we're going to do is take the year to really look at our communication across the district. And so 
we um, we actually uh, um, had Jay Stewart, I think I've mentioned his name before to you, who was at that time the um, director for communication for the Department of Elementary and Secondary and Education. So I felt that I had gone to the best to help us to find our way through all of this. Um, he came in and we started with two focus groups. Um, we had some conversation, first of all, with Lorraine and said, okay, where do we see this going? What are we, what are we wanting to accomplish here? And we felt that there, was, there were just a number of different levels that we wanted to go after. It wasn't just about one thing. It wasn't just about like the school out to the community or the superintendent's office out to the community. We felt that it was multi-layered here. Um, so what we did was we went back and, and had this discussion with Jace. We talked about what we were looking for as our outcomes, anticipated outcomes, what we wanted to produce. We knew we wanted something that was relatively all-inclusive. You'll see on here, like we were looking at parent and family, we were looking at crisis management, we were looking at all kinds of different things. So Jace came back and the first pro part of the process was after we made up several questions and we're looking at, hi Lord, please join us. Um, we decided that we would have these fo host focus groups and each school sent, uh, for example, a, a parent that would represent their school council, for example, as one of, part of one of the focus groups. Administrators made up one of the focus groups. And so we went through with all the questions and then Jace prepared a, a mini report for us and gave it to us and said, okay, so here's what I'm seeing from the focus groups, but I think we need now, of course, to take this to the next level. And that's when we sent out the survey last year and said, okay, because it's, and the survey was really designed to either affirm or tell us, no, that this particular thing wasn't an issue, just to help clarify. So he sent that out. We got, I, I want to say around 600 um, surveys back, which is a good return rate. We were thrilled with that return rate. And so, and of course, there were some areas of comments and that kind of thing. So folks made some some additional comments. So of course, then we got another report saying, okay, here's some you know salient points for, from what we found, and some some different ideas of where you can go with this. And so we took all of that and we said, okay, so now uh, let's talk with the administrators. Brought the administrators in, and Todd and said, okay, we're going to talk about what this is going to look like now. And Jace was involved in that as well. <coughs> And then both Joel and Laura offered to take a lead role in this and work with Todd to design it at a, a, a tighter level. And exactly to Kathy's point, we we came up with the Prezi, but then we worked back and said, and that's the document that you've got in front of you, saying, okay, here's some greater detail, uh, and we're going to go into greater detail on this tonight as well. But it gives you the highlights of what we're looking for, where we're where we're aiming to to land. And so I'm going to turn it over to Todd and Joel and Laura. Really are going to just kind of be here to support us with some additional questions that we haven't thought of or whatever, we'll take it back and have a, a fresh look at it. So Todd, I'm gonna to turn it over Great. to you, but that was where this all started. Great, uh, so in your packets is, is, is um, this document, which mirrors what I'm gonna to present to you, but we also presented at the bottom of this document and in one of each one of the areas of communication, a timeline, so that we could give you folks a timeline in terms of you know when we want to get things done by you know what we're currently doing and, and what we're aiming for so um, that's what that document does as well I want to thank I'm just thinking yeah. too I would want you to know that all of the administrators had buy-in on this yeah. and were involved on di in different levels so it wasn't just a case of getting all of the surveys and everything else then we took it all all together and the entire administrative team was involved sorry Great. so I want to thank Joel Bates uh, and Laura Friend, because from the get-go and from when I came on, the three of us worked together to kind of build the vision for this and really identify the four areas of communication that we thought were instrumental in the district, as well as weave in the values of you know clarity, consistency, and predictability as it relates to communication as a whole. We then brought um, what was a skeletal framework of that to our administrative team at our retreat this summer. We got feedback from them and then built it from there. And then, what, then we also um, sat down with Jay Stewart from uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, got his feedback, and then again went back out with, with, with this to our administration for any last, any last feedback. So um, you know, I'm going to present to you tonight the way that we've broken it up is into those four areas. You'll find within the presentation we're identifying what we're currently doing um, and then the, the next piece for each one of these categories is looking ahead. 
what we then need, to, what we feel like we need to do more of, or what the next steps are for us, or where we need to go. Um, so with that, I'll start. Um, perfect. Um, so we first started with um, a commitment, and we wanted to identify kind of an objective with anything. You know, what is our objective here? And it's really to foster and sustain effective partnerships with all stakeholders via effective communication for all of our students. When we think about who's the recipient of, 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 our, of our strong communication, it is to benefit our students and to engage all of our stakeholders. So looking you know, above from 30,000 feet, this really is the objective through these four, these four categories that I'm gonna talk about. So as it relates to um, parent and family engagement, I won't go through each one of these, but these are the current practices that we're currently doing to engage our families. And from school open houses at the beginning of the year to parent conferences, you know, to the types of media, the, our, our Twitter handles, our blogs, our school and teacher websites, um, meeting with um, school councils, our school events, celebrations, our school and our student handbooks. Those are the types of things that we're currently doing to engage parents, to engage our families in the district. So we thought it was important to kind of lay the foundation, lay that ba baseline of what we're already doing. But then the, ne the next piece you'll see is what we need to do, what we feel like we want to do based on survey feedback, based on the work we did with Jace, based on the um, administration's feedback. Looking forward, what do we want to continue to do or start doing more of? And that really involves the ongoing engagement with each of our school councils at the building level. Uh, we want to prioritize email communication and make that a priority and make that consistent across all buildings. Uh, we want district-wide response times to ensure consistent communication. <coughs> We've talked in here uh, before about creating a parent university and outreach to our parents, outreach to our communities to inform them on things such as safety, internet safety, as well as technology, our digital literacy plan. Um, and then that would also involve parent information sessions on Chromebooks and safety. Laura and I just came from one of those um, in Lancaster um, earlier this evening. So before you, you go on, so I just wanna to speak to one or two of those things. Sure. The prioritization of email for administrators has gotta be something that we look at because it's, um, we get so many emails in a day, uh, so many, uh, and, and Joan DeAngelis probably gets more than any of us, you know, and, and we already get anywhere from 50 to 100 in a day. Sometimes we'll sit here at the beginning of an admin meeting and between the beginning of the admin meeting and the end, we will proceed to 100 emails. So uh, pri uh, that prior uh, prioritization of our emails is, is a big deal. And so, um, and the high school is also really problematic for that kind of thing. So um, Jace gave us a couple of really good suggestions to go back and take a look at how we deal with some of our emails to try to lighten the load a little bit or share the load in some way or another. Uh, so we're trying to do that. We are still trying to work in that. We try very hard to do that 24 to 48 hour turnaround where we can. We try so hard to do that. And I know Kathy and I have talked about this a number of times, the notion that, you know, even if you just say, listen, we're, we're trying to find the answer for you, like just hold tight, you know, but it, rather than just wait until you have the answer, then come back. Sometimes parents think that they're not being heard. So um, the emails is, is a, even though it, it creates one level of communication, it can go south pretty quickly, you know, if you're not cautious with that. Um, the, the parent university, um, this is, uh, I, I just want to speak about that for a moment. Again, one of the things that came up at Stowe the other night were, were some parents who had approached us to say, you know, we're really concerned about vaping and, and what, what's happening in our communities right now could you do some sessions on vaping for us so that we understand and the one parent said you know i see all this paraphernalia i don't even know what it is so i thought you know probably really good like when tina was here and, and did a presentation for us last year she brought all kinds of paraphernalia so we could literally see exactly what this stuff looks like not that we can present at all because it's just too much but it does give you a good flavor and so um, I think that that the vaping will be something that we're going to do a follow-up for like a parent a parent university night or parent session night so we'll, we'll continue to monitor those things and where we see a need we'll 
we'll try to jump on it and go out there. One of the other things that's come up, and I know Aileen, you and I have talked about this too, is about the Chromebooks. You know, is is that an area that we also need to go out and help our parents with? So uh, these are things that are on our radar for sure. And I think just the fact that we've now com successfully completed, well, just about completed the Lancaster safety meeting tonight. I think, you know, I, I remember saying to Lisa, uh, because that's still the first, the first one, I wasn't sure how many parents we would get out. And at first it was a little quiet parking lot. <laughs> I looked and I thought, oh my goodness, we're not going to get hardly anyone out. But I remember turning to Lisa and the chief, so uh, uh, well, the chief Landry is there, and I said, you know, even if we have two parents, I want to run this anyway. And that's not what happened. I mean, we, we, ha we ended up with close to 50 people there that night. So it was a really good session. So I'm very, so I do think that the more that we do this, I think we'll start to see parents feel more and more comfortable in coming out to attend these. That's our hope anyway. So, sorry. Thank you. Great. So you'll see in on the handout that I have, but on the bottom of that, there is somewhat of a timeline, and some of those things are ongoing now. But when you look at something like a parent university or the parent info sessions that we plan to give, that's something that we want. We're looking towards the future in terms of building upon. Uh, the next area we established is crisis communication, and there's obviously been a focus on safety, uh, particularly safety this year, and how to communicate in, in um, times of crises. And so in terms of things that we're currently doing, um, you know, we have those continued partnerships with law enforcement, uh, municipalities, our first responders, our fire department. Uh, we've established communication and notification pro uh, protocols with our district administration. Um, we've actively engaged safe committees. Um, we've established emergency procedures district-wide, and that continued use of school messenger to communicate um, information. I think I said when I came on, too, in terms of the way this administration communicates uh, through our phones and through emails, I think it's a three-minute response time before all <laughs> You know, eight of us are on text when yeah. you know there's a big heat warning coming up, and Jill texts and says, "What should we do tomorrow?" Um, we were all on it within a matter of minutes. So and had a um, meeting set up for the next day right, right away. Um, yeah. And being new, that's new for me, and so I was quite impressed with the, the level of response time and, and collaboration around that. But moving forward in terms of crisis um, communication, and we talked about this at our safety meetings in all three towns, is building that crisis plan. We've committed to Alice training for all of our staff, uh, which Lisa Gulbicki, a coordinator of health and wellness, is currently in process of explaining to the <coughs> Lancaster folks. Um, we had two days of training on that, which we spoke about at an earlier school committee meeting this year. Uh, we're holding those information sessions on safety and the Alice training. Uh, we've revised our current emergency response plan to reflect the Alice methodology. Um, we're gonna, we want to strengthen and evaluate protocols for a varying array of emergency situations. Our medical emergency response plan in coordination with local law enforcement, our fire department, municipalities, even our traditional student drills. We've already had fire drills, uh, bus evacuations, shelter in place, and then um, flip charts for classroom emergency procedures and crises. That kind of go-to document, that go-to manual for teachers when there is a crisis, there is, you know, an emergency in a classroom, and a teacher can quickly go to, you know, that page in the in the flip chart to say, this is what I need to do. And each teacher will have one of those in their room, so there's consistent protocols that go across the district, um, so that we're all um, on the same page. And I just want to add a couple of quick things in here too. So the Alice training again. I just want to to note that right now. Um, we've made a three-year commitment to Alice so that we will continue to build upon the good work that's been done this year. So this is not a one-and-done thing. This is, this is uh, as what we see as a progression. Um, so that's the first thing I would want to point out. Uh, the second thing, uh, one of the things that, we were, that uh, was mentioned that we're already doing is we do have like dedicated channels directly to the police. And um, we are very grateful because we did get some um, some um, equipment from, I know in Bolton, for example, from our police department, that we have a direct immediate connection out of th our two buildings in this campus directly to the police. Um, Stowe just changed the frequency, so we're just in the process of bu buying some um, some new equipment there. Lancaster is good, but so even though it says we're already doing this, we still have to consistently stay current and make sure that we're all and th that we're practicing our equipment and making sure that it's always um, it's always alert, it's always tuned in, it's always ready to go for us. So um, just would want you to know about the flip charts. Um, 
I just want to make a comment on that too. Uh, we have just now finished um, the, the flip chart emergency task force. You're going to see it at your next meeting. Um, I, I think that it's probably going to be close to a goal. I don't know that you'll make a lot of changes to it. Um, I did compare it with the, the NEMLIC, and I think I think we've covered just about every area that we could have. There's one, there are one or two areas there that I don't think we need to include for Neshoba, uh, but you may come back and say, no, you might want to do this anyway, even though it's not an issue for us. So uh, that's that's so close to ready to go, and that has just been a mammoth undertaking, absolutely mammoth. But uh, but we're ready to go with that too. All right. Uh, next area is that intra-district communication. How do we communicate with each other within the district? Um, and again, current practices of how we do that. There are multiple modes of internal district communications from our internal email server. I spoke about the texting and the communication that we have amongst our administrative team, faculty and department meetings, our professional development, um, even technology, Google Hangouts, where people can get online and have um, intradistrict communication. The memos that come out from our principals, uh, principals meetings, administrative council meetings, our ad, ad hoc leadership meetings, our weekly parent updates. Those are all ways that we're communicating internally and with each other. Yeah, uh, and so I'll just talk, just for example, the ad hoc leadership meetings. So lots of times what will happen is we'll be in a, a, either a large admin team uh, meeting or a smaller one, and different topics will come up, and we'll say, you know, we need to dedicate an entire meeting to just that topic. And so we'll immediately call for another um, a, a, an ad hoc meeting. What we've done, what we did last year, and we agreed to do the same thing this year, is we save all of our, our Wednesdays, at, right uh, every Wednesday across throughout the, the year, so that any ad hoc meetings that we need go on that Wednesday and we all know that we've got the time so it's not like oh my gosh how are we going to fit this into our schedule we already know it's going to be that next Wednesday um, and that's worked very very well for us um, the, I don't want to necessarily speak about the Google Hangout but it gets back to your point about the the texting and how we we stay in touch so quickly and that that particular night that you're referring to was the night when we had the heat and we were really concerned about the heat the next day but you'll also see that especially as we go into snow and such and um, you spoke earlier during the family engagement we try very hard to have that consistent message go out so what we'll do and Joel generally starts us off with okay I've started the, the, the Google Doc everybody chime in and we all get our own a few minutes at playing with that Google Doc to make sure that we, we have everything in there that we need to. Laura generally goes in with the red pen and starts to go through it extensively. Yeah. Once everybody goes so into <laughs> you, Yes, you are the fixer on those documents. <laughs> By the time it, it goes out though, it's specific to each school and yet the message is consistent because we have collectively, all of us, worked on the document. And that has worked very well for us. So it doesn't matter whether you're in Lancaster or still, you're pretty much getting the same document. Sorry. Great. Uh, so moving forward, this is an area, you know, when we met with Jace and we reviewed survey results and we, you know, we, we got feedback from the administration that this was an area that, um, in terms of looking at that kind of data, that um, we felt really good about um, in, ter in terms of staying the course of what we're currently doing and communicating with each other across the district. Um, that being said, the idea of consistency, looking at faculty meetings, um, the way in which we message out. Um, we talked about um, the platform by which we use and keeping the platforms consistent across schools as well as how parents are receiving information um, or how we are receiving information between each other. Um, so that, that in terms of moving forward was an area that you know, we had received feedback that was strong and, and, and um, pretty consistent. The next final area is around informative um, event-based awareness. And these are the areas where we're celebrating student achievement and we're spotlighting school events. Um, we're do, we do a lot of that at school committees. I think you'll be hearing a lot from students from each school throughout the school year. Um, our website, um, the school websites, the Twitter handles that our administrators have, and in central office, the blogging that we're doing, our school councils involving um, our community and PTO and our CPAC, our school-based TV and media platforms, as well as our community media focus. 
So I, I'm just going to speak quickly about the, the school and district website. Uh, this was an area that we started to do some preliminary work on last year, and so this year is just kind of that continuation. We know what the vision is for that website. We've had a lot of parents offer us um, lots of comments and <laughs> feedback and input as to what that, that could look like or how we can make it better, and we've taken those to heart. And so. We're hoping, like we've we've done, a, we've had lots of meetings on this. I think we're really close to being ready to do the actual work. Although we've, you've done some already. I, I know that you and uh, uh, Cindy have already done some early work on this. So, just so that you know, we'll be putting real efforts in this uh, through the month of October and November. The goal is to try to have something out there around December, January. That well, probably j more like January. That's the goal, but we didn't want to put that in here just yet because we're just not sure if we can hit that target or not, but that's what we would love to do. Um, okay, I'll wait to actually, I'll wait till you go to the next. Uh, so looking forward, I think this, like um, Brooke said, this is an area that we really do want to grow as it relates to kind of spotlighting what we do in the district, um, as it relates to the website and the web pages that we have for our schools. So. Uh, we're looking to consolidate, reorganize our website for those four areas, uh, those three areas of clarity, consistency, predictability, accessibility for people when they get on. That is the face of the district. When people want to find out something about Neshoba Regional School District, you go to the web page. Um, we are currently researching, utilizing online media platforms to distribute that kind of news to our community and track uh, the analytics and really look at elevating the most useful content on our website and really streaming line, streamlining that um, and making it easy for people to find information. Um, you'll find that come this coming month, we are gonna start taking a look at different templates and what different templates might look like for our website and our web pages to grab, to grab our audience and take a, really take a look at what is the most useful information and how people can find that information um, with ease. And one of the things that we also did last year, like, I mean, I, I focus on the work that Jace did um, with, with, uh, within the district, but we also took a look at things like the, the sheer volume and logistics of the emails that are in and out of our district, in and out of our offices. Uh, we, pulled the, we pulled it down for every single administrator so we know exactly how, on average how many emails come in and out of our offices. Um, so we did the same thing with the website. We went back and we took a look and we said, okay, how many hits on some of these things? You know, one of the things about the website too is, you know, and this was really a, a, a something that Jace had, had um, really encouraged us to take a look at is how many clicks. How many clicks does it take you to get to where you want to go? And we need to reduce that number of clicks, you know? So that's why we're talking about the elevating of the more most useful content. And we think we know what that useful content is right now just by when we take a look at you know the, the places that people are going to on the website. The other thing that was of interest that came through um, when, when asked on this, the survey, we asked parents like where do you want to get your information from? Like is it out of this office? Is it out of this table? Is it? And I think it was 85% or more said we want to get it from our schools, which I understand. So um, that also sends us a message, you know. So uh, I, I would want you to know that it w we took a really broad look at, at this information. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we also talked about centralizing uh, the oversight of web pages <coughs> and taking a look at having one or two people per school that are kind of overseeing that and are adding information to that so that we keep that streamlined and we keep it consistent so we don't have 50, 50 people going on and managing, uh, you know, one web page. Um, that's that's one piece of feedback that we received, yeah. uh, as well as ensuring the maintenance of the school website to um, reflect current information. I know that when I came on, and that's some of the work we did this summer, is just kind of purging the website with information that was just old, that we didn't need, that didn't need to be up there anymore, and determining what reports um, should still be up there and what what's information that's just that's just not essential right now. Uh, we wanted to determine which platform uh, for each communication type that we have keep that consistent. And then finally, um, we've talked uh, a lot about kind of submitting Neshoba highlights to local papers. Um, we just did that mm -hmm. um, this uh, past week. We um, sent out to local papers uh, a write-up of the high school and the ranking of the high school and all that's going on at the high school to a variety of local papers. 
um, that was well received, um, getting student quotes and quotes from administrators and um, adorned with photos and all that kind of stuff to, to really elevate that um, spotlighting of, of events in the district. So uh, one, one of the strengths that we didn't realize we had was when we hired Raina uh, Rago, uh, who was our, you've met her before for our extended, she was actually overseeing the communication. I believe that made it come up, up around this table when she was in Marlborough. So we said, hey, have we got a nice role for you? <laughs> Would you have interest in helping us to, to create some of these documents? And then as she was going along and as she was talking to different people and I, you know, I had always called to refer to it as the show, the highlights, whatever it is. But I, I like what she brought forward. She said, really, when you think about it, it's it's our points of pride. What are our points of pride so in the nice district? Friend. And I thought that was really interesting because when Jay's first came, Jay Stewart first came to see us and to talk to us about it, he said, well, where's a document that shows the really good things that are happening in the district? And I was like, <coughs> we don't have that, you know? So it was one of those moments in time where you think, yeah, we, we talk about issues, we talk about concerns, we talk about resolution for different things. We don't really talk about the celebrations. So it was an opportunity for us to kind of go back and have a, a, a rethink on that. Um, so uh, something the, uh, that I also want to put forward is that you know when we when we talk about all of this, it's n it's not Brooke separate from the team. Um, you know we are a collective team when we're talking about things like the timing of our emails or trying to get that parent response out or trying to be consistent with whatever message it is. That that isn't just a superintendent issue or thing. It's something that we talk about pretty consistent, consistently, whether it's residency, whether it's what, and whatever it is, we talk about it as a team, and we try to make sure that we're sending out the exact same message wherever we can. And the timing is one of those things, and looking at our email structure and how we can better respond faster to some of our emails so that parents don't feel that they're not being listened to or heard or whatever until it's like maybe a day or two days later and then you know so um, so that's for all of us to take into consideration and I think that as a team we looked at it and said we can do better in this area you know so um, I, I didn't mean to, to, to stop you there but I just wanted to make sure that people realize this is a team effort this isn't just a superintendent and or an assistant superintendent and or a principal's thing. Yeah, uh, that you know that ends the, the presentation. Um, yeah, I don't know if Joel or Laura have anything to add or say. I do want to acknowledge the work that they helped on this. The Prezi was Joel's, that the initial Prezi was Joel's um, brainchild I think, in the beginning, which was great. And it, I think the way in which it um, presented itself was, was great. Laura and I had a very extensive meeting in her office one day and working through this as well. So the, the work that you folks did on it um, was essential and I thank you for the help with it. So Joel, Laura, anything to add? I just think as always, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I really enjoy about being an administrator in this district is the culture where, you know, we, we look at what we do well and where we can be better and then we put our heads together and bring in experts to say, okay, because it, you know, there, there's always a desire to have the best uh, process that you have, but it comes down to looking at different systems as well. And, and that's been really helpful for me as a principal to just dialogue with my colleagues, to dialogue with experts like Jay Stewart, and, and, and sort of rethink how we are um, messaging, how we're getting that message out, how we're responding, how we're having that two-way communication with our families, how we're building those relationships and that partnership. And uh, I'm really excited about the, the work that's being done, that's uh, you know uh, in process, and, and looking forward to uh, what I hope will be just a continued trajectory of, of success in, in communication with all of our families and, and our community. Thanks. Yeah. Laura? I think, uh, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we can we continue to want to grow and get better and be as consistent and as transparent as we possibly can, always, because that's what's best for our students. So that's where we start, um, and we look forward to grow. Uh, so we look forward to the year ahead and supporting um, Todd with, um, you know, he's very humble. He is. Too humble. <laughs> We didn't really do very much. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're very.
very pleased to have him here with us and, and really help bring us together so that we can grow together as a district. So well, we're here. I do think, Joel, your point is well made too. I, you know, when when you take a look at some of the reports that, that Jay's generated, it was, I found it fascinating to, to read through and some of the suggestions that were on there. Was, I never would have thought of that. So you're right, when we bring some of these experts in to help us think this through, it's incredibly helpful to us. So so that, that's a broad overview. Thank you. Any questions, comments for anyone? Um, Mike? I'm wondering, um, based on all the different communication areas and the, uh, the current practices, are there things that we do in this district that are unique uh, that are really not done in other districts or short of that are things that that we excel at that we do really really well um, So in other words, are we sort of are there any areas where we're sort of trailblazing? And we're doing things that other districts don't don't really do we're trying new things or Again short of that. What are the areas that we can look at self-evaluate and say we actually do this really well? That's a that's a great question I don't know that I have an instant answer, but but I would tell you this. I think we communicate more than any district I've been in before. <laughs> I, would, I would say that. Internally or with the community or, or both? Both. I think both. Um, the type of communication that we have internally with our administrators, that's what I'm used to. So I don't know necessarily that they would be used to that. I don't know because I wasn't here before, so I don't know what they are used to, but certainly what we do right now is my comfort level, and, and I love that because we all, as soon as anything, for example, I mean, this is a perfect example. I mean, I think three administrators today had something go down in their schools that they needed me like that. And right away, and, and then, you know, like Laura was providing different updates throughout the course of the day. You just need to know this, you just need to know this. And so, and so I, I know. You know, one of the flags, and this is an administrator, probably something that a superintendent would be comfortable with, but at the Stowe meeting, I'll, I'll go back to the Stowe parent meeting, there wasn't one situation that was brought up in that room that I didn't know completely about. Not one situation where one parent came up and said, well, you probably didn't know about this. Oh, but I did, you know? And well, you probably didn't know that I was the dad that did this or said this. I actually did, mm -hmm. you know? So for as a superintendent, that was a very good feeling mm -hmm. because that means that the, the that I'm being fed all the right information at the right time. So I uh, that's why you saw you know, that stay the course. I, I think we we had this communication even this summer. Do we want to stay the course or do we want to do something different? And everybody said no, we're going to stay the course because it works for us. And the the timing is just so quick between all of us. And that's a as Todd said, that was, that's a, an interesting lesson to learn when you come into this group is how quickly we respond with each other. So I, but I would say overarchingly, I don't know about trailblazing, but I think that collectively, yeah, could we be the do a lot of, of the communication culture. Yeah, and that's what sounds. Like. I, I mean, I will say that the one thing I picked up on, and <laughs> Brooke asked me this, I think, in my final interview, why? And she said, why Neshoba? And I said, because you're student centered, and that's evident. Uh, it was evident from the outside. <coughs> Um, and that's a foundation for me that's very, very important. And so I know that that's a foundation that all of the other things that when I said I was coming here and people said, oh, great DECA program, phenomenal robotics program, wow, they're performing. <laughs> all of those things are built on being student-centered. Mm -hmm. And that was my answer to her. And I would agree. And the nice thing is that when you're hiring people like that, you're all of that same mindset. And so that just strengthens the infrastructure of your team. So I don't know that I can think of anything that's trailblazing. That doesn't mean, though, that that we're not. Right. You know, to be Enjoy. honest with you, I, 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 I'll, I'll give you a different example. Being at the, the superintendent and chief's um, morning meeting the other morning, um, when I took a look at the the NEMLEC, um, the, the different uh, printouts that they had there and such, I could clearly see, and looking at it through different flip charts from other school districts and such, I could clearly see that the work that we're doing right now is miles ahead of other districts. So right now, and it was funny because again, I go back to Stowe, I don't know why, that's just kind of bizarre, but when I was at school council meeting in Stowe, one of the, it was at Hale actually, and one of the parents asked me, well, what keeps you up at night? And I thought, wow, that's, no, no parent has ever asked me that, what keeps you up at night? And I sat there for a minute and I thought, 
what keeps me up at night? I said, I'm worried that I'm going to miss something with the safety. I'm, I'm worried that there's going to be something that I haven't thought through. Because you're thinking about it all the time, have, you know, whether it's staff or students or administration or municipal or whatever partners, like, have you thought it all through? But when I take a look now and I, I see exactly where we're going, where we're going to be by the end of the school year, and I'm looking at other school districts right now, I feel that we are in a great place. So, other questions, comments, at least? Um, this is really great. I really appreciate hearing about all the, the work that's gone into this. Um, and my only quick question was just because I didn't see it in here, but how are you weaving the teachers in each building into this parent and family engagement piece? Um, you know, I, from my own personal experience as a parent, they do really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a teacher that my kids have had that have not done really excellent um, communication, but, you know, obviously you want them to buy into mm -hmm. this and be part of this whole consistency and clarity and predictability piece. And are they a part of that? Will they be a part of some? Well, I'm gonna turn this over to the principals. I'm gonna start and then I'll let both Joe and Laura speak to it. But um, it, it, your, your point is well taken. I think that what you'll see though is that the uh, level of communication, the type of communication differs as the students get a little bit older. And one of the things that we would really like to take a look at uh, eventually I mean we're not there right now but is what's that level of consistency look like at the high school mm -hmm. that's my bigger concern right now so that there's a nice level of consistency there because I'm not sure that there is right now I openly say I don't think that there is so that's an area that's almost a little beast into it itself you know um, but other than that I, I think you know when you're looking at your year elementary and middle schools and you can correct me if I'm wrong a lot of that's kind of laid out the expectation is laid out with the staff with the administration, so and, and because the administrators connect with each other all the time, they're always comparing notes. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, you know, so that communication is pretty consistent. So Joel and Laura, I'll turn it over to you. Um, I think it's part of the culture of the school communities, and we're, we're very fortunate to have very strong cultures, I think, in our schools. Mm -hmm. And all of our teachers um, are very responsive to the needs of families because it's what's in the best interest of the students. So I kind of think about it in two parts is one, timeliness when questions and concerns arise. And um, all staff know they follow the same rule 24, 48 hours, and, and most often it's less than that. And, mm -hmm. and, and like Brooke said, they're great about letting us know uh, ahead of time if there's a potential need for support from our end too. So I think that that's just part of our culture. In terms of celebrating, acknowledging <coughs> events and uh, student work and student growth, I think we do a good job at that. We try and celebrate that through our websites and teachers are have Twitter accounts and they're communicating with our families um, by sharing pictures and some of our teachers have blogs and all of that's great. And I think it's a continued area of growth for us. Uh, some teachers feel more comfortable uh, and confident, and others are still, you know, not on the cusp of growing in that area. But I think bar none, and our school council feedback supports that. Mm -hmm. That generally our parents, I say generally, and I think the majority of our families feel really supported with communication from our teachers. And, that can and that's a testament too. to our teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I guess know. I would just add yeah. to that too that uh, you know, um, you know, move, that adding that consistency piece is um, important in looking at the, you know the technologies that are available as those continue to evolve and and how we can help our teachers wrap their heads around what that looks like in terms of fitting that into their communication plans. You know, as we. Uh, and again, thank you for your support of, of the uh, the one to one initiative. But but using those tools that are embedded within uh, the work that teachers are pushing out to students <coughs> and, and, and parents as well, and, and how that how that will continue to evolve in terms of that that uh, there's the passive communication. These things are going on, but that two way communication as well that you're dialoguing about. Uh, uh, the expectations and the, and the work and the achievement that uh, you know we want our communities to know about. 
Other questions? Um, you, school councils have come up several times. Um, they're in two different parts of the presentation, and people have been mentioning them in the discussion. I wanted to ask about their role in communication, particularly with like the parents and the community, because um, they seem like they serve a really important purpose. Um, but and maybe this goes back to consistency. It feels like they may have been used in consistency and inconsistently um, in the past, and maybe that is the that's up to the principal and. Um, just looking for clarity around that and particularly how the work that the school councils are doing then gets disseminated back out. So I'll start and then I'll have you you both pick that up. I think that that was one of the areas we also identified, so I appreciate you bringing that up. That was one of the areas we also identified last year is, is that there is that level of uh, inconsistency throughout. So that we've even already had that communication around this table with the administrators and looking at trying to look at school councils through a bit of a fresh lens. Um, that doesn't mean a wholesale change, it just means that can we tweak this a little bit differently so that there's a, a, a more of a consistent approach, consistent expectation, consistent anticipated outcome, that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of where we've started with that, but uh, so you're, you're absolutely right. I think that there's some areas there that we still need to do some work on. So Joel and Laura, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Um, so I, I think one of the you know, the biggest roles that our school councils play is in, you know, working with the, the principals in developing this school improvement plan and looking at, you know, what we do well and where we can be better. And so from a communication standpoint, uh, you know, we, our school council just finished our new school improvement plan and there are goals around communication that are very closely aligned to the district improvement plan so that, um, so that level of consistency is, uh, it's, it's consciously worked through, and, um, uh, and and I think you know just in terms of having uh, the you know a form of the meeting with that uh, you know invaluable um, opportunity to dialogue that you know are your uh, constituents if you will is there something that we need to know about should we you know add that as an agenda item that kind of thing. Laura, anything to add? No, I would reiterate what Joel said. Um, they're they're highly instrumental in the work around our school improvement plan, mm -hmm. um, and we make concerted efforts to make sure our school improvement plan meets our local needs and addresses um, what the, are the goals are that are articulated by the district. Mm -hmm. And they're very instrumental in that work and and throughout the year, <coughs> measuring that work to see where we're at and then. Right. A, a, a attempting to celebrate it, and I say attempting because I always feel like we can always do better. Uh, we can always do better in everything, and we can do better in that area. Is how can we acknowledge and really celebrate all of the great things our staff and our students are doing? So I think that would be an area of growth at our school councils, at least from my perspective. Could look towards this year. I think that's something great that we could consider. Um, we really see them as a representative uh, group. They're, they're really a touch voice. point for the community. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the pulse, you know, because sometimes as a, an administrator, you, you can pick up certain pulses, yeah. but you really have to rely on others that are out there all the time for that, you know, to either affirm or change your direction or whatever. So I, I see them as very valuable uh, resource to our schools. Other questions? Comments? Um, well, I just the, the comment that I want to make has to do with, and I want to piggyback on um, what Elise and Elaine um, brought up, and um, I think it, it comes down to the issue of, of consistency and holding that same high expectation with regard to communication for everyone. I know that in the past, when this committee has spoken about use of technology in the schools and different classrooms, one of our big issues was a lack of consistency, that there were some teachers that did a lot and some teachers that didn't do it at all. Mm -hmm. and, and how can that be okay? Because you want, you want parity, you want to know that kids are getting the same um, or similar experience or comparable experience. Um, and it's not what a child gets isn't teacher dependent. So I appreciate your comments about looking further into consistency and communication or having what the standards for communication will be at the high school because um, I think that's important. But also, um, it strikes me in other districts where I have worked, um, 
the, the, there were times in the year when um, the school councils would come and make a presentation to the school committee. And um, just, um, and I don't know that, that that has been the case here. Um, but anyway, it gives us a flavor of what goes on. Uh, because again, it, it looking at the past, going on school websites, you don't see the agendas, you don't see the minutes, you don't really know what's going on. So if, if there's going to be more consistency around that, then that would be great. Because they are, they do play an important role Absolutely. at the schools, and it would be good to have that, that recognized and have the expectations around that. So, but thank you. This was the, the, the presentation. Um, I thought it was, um, it touched upon the important things. Uh, it was, and I, I made this comment to Todd at a, at a meeting, it wasn't death by PowerPoint, so thanks. <laughs> It moved, Thank you, and I, <laughs> I like the cheat sheet that went with it, with the looking forward, and um, look forward to seeing how it pans out. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it too. Great. Um, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. We're going to move on to um, the superintendent's um, goals, and so we <coughs> take a look at them in the materials packet, just to remind you, our goal from last year was to have these done in June, and you may recall that at the June 11th meeting, we did look at um, the superintendent's <coughs> annual plan, but did mention that uh, she needed more time for communication for all the reasons she mentioned, and I think that that has really come together well. Um, but we did look at the other, the other goals, um, the professional <coughs> practice goal and the student learning goal, and there was, I think, um, I don't want to give anything short shrift, but I, I don't think there were any questions or concerns raised, but that being said, if there are I'd like to start with those two goals to see if there are any comments or questions for goals, um, particularly about professional practice um, and student learning. Mike. I, I, I've wondered for um, some time now um, whether as, I'm sure that there's a, Straightforward answer, but as part of the digital learning, uh, sorry, the digital literacy plan, do we have um, something in place to disseminate to the kids about digital citizenship and our expectations for that? Yep. Especially, especially yes. considering we've got these, this, you know, the yeah. yeah. unveiling of the Chromebooks and sort of new technology responsibilities that are associated with that. You'll see, yeah, yeah, you'll see that come out in the digital literacy plan that will be presented later this fall. Um, you know, every every student who has a Chromebook um, went through a digital citizenship lesson um, at each of the schools, um, as well as the, the the rollout process. And then we've um, orchestrated uh, Parent Night on October 18th, which is going to do the same thing for parents. Um, that's an information night um, to kind of explain the digital literacy, the one-to-one -one Chromebook, as well as. Um, Inform them on the digital citizenship piece that their that their kids were and their students were exposed to. Yeah. Great question. Other questions or comments about the um, professional <coughs> practice goal uh, and student learning? I just have a comment that I think it's it's really helpful to be you know sort of seeing each of these pieces come forward so early in the year and earlier than I had anticipated right. <laughs> and and just seeing you know and having such a clear timeline of you know what to expect and 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 very clear you know sort of pieces that we're seeing um, it's just really helpful to kind of put this all in perspective for me and think ahead and say okay so then we're gonna see this in November and then I you know I have all this context built from you know, you all through the summer and obviously into the beginning of the school year. So this is really helpful. Thank you. I, I'm hoping that you'll feel the same when we when we roll out the digital literacy. In fact, you know, we were talking the other day. I think you can see the digital literacy. We're going to take a similar approach to how we've taken this because we just feel that this is really clear. So I, uh, from our perspective, it's always clear to us. But of course, when we present, you say. 
did that go well? I think it did, you know, so I think that we felt really comfortable about, uh, you know, for example, like even uh, presenting the second piece of this tonight for the, not, not just the Prezi, but here's another piece. And that was because, uh, you know, we were talking through so many details and I was like, we need to put this, we need to articulate this in uh, some type of clear format as well. So I felt really good by the time we were ready for tonight that we had the Prezi and we had the supporting documentation to say, Here's what it's going to look like. So I think you'll see us take almost an identical approach with the digital literacy so that it is clear. So I really appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Mike? One more thing. Um, so, Brooke, your, the, the professional practice goal addresses um, safety measures. And there, there's like obviously a tremendous emphasis on that. Yeah. Is that is that because in your tenure here, you, you saw that there were some glaring deficiencies in that area, or are you, um, or, or I guess as a district, are we just addressing these emerging realities? We are not addressing emergency re realities. Um, we, we are in terms of modernizing our approach, but it was because I thought we had gaping holes. Okay. And I say that very openly. Um, you know, the fact that the flip chart is like almost 20 years old. Right. That shouldn't be, you know. It should be something that's kept current. And, and I'll I'll go to that as an example. Like, a lot has changed inside of 17 years, 20 years. A, a lot of things have changed. I wish that that had been kept more current, and it wouldn't have been the mammoth undertaking that it was. Same thing with the crisis plan, you know, that, that we're closing in on. Like, I'm hoping to have that kind of wrapped up by the end of November. There really isn't a, a current crisis plan. There will be, and we're on the way to getting there. Um, but that was that's that was a hole. Um, Alice, I mean, we were doing pieces of it, but I didn't ever feel that we could go forward and say we're doing Alice. Now I would tell you, we're doing a fair chunk of Alice. We're not. We're never going to do all of Alice. I'm just not comfortable with that. But we're we're doing a fair chunk of it enough to say yes. We're, we're doing a lot of Alice within our district. So, no, I think um, I think there's that, that piece, but then I think that there were also other things, you know, like just simple things, um, like the proper demarcation of our doors. That was something that just wasn't done. So we could never say go to Hale School door number D3. There were, there were no market, nobody knew. And so though there were simple things like that that had to be done. Um, our police didn't have any maps of our buildings. There were no there were no footprints anywhere for our police or fire, and so that was I mean it wasn't that wasn't a mammoth undertaking. That was kind of a oh we can we can do this we can pull but this together. But obviously pretty significant. Yeah. It was, and especially because you know, and, and talking to our police, they would they would say, and they're so dedicated, and they they say if something happens in Lancaster, so they'll be there, <laughs> you know, so or getting them all the keys so that they all have keys for all of our buildings. Some of the things were simple, maybe it took a little time or effort, other things took huge amounts of time. The, uh, I'm going to go back to, and I think I've already shared this with you before, but like Parkland was one of those days where, you know, the chief said right away, you know what, and, and he was absolutely right and what, there were lessons learned within minutes of that whole thing. And it was like, yes, you know what, you're right. We're going to have to go back and do a revisit. So that's why I say that's not what was driving us. Uh, what was driving us was the holes. But we certainly, along the way, wherever we could add or learn or tweak our process, we have done that. So as I say, when I sat there the other morning, I thought, we are so on top of our game right now in this area. It feels good. It really does. That's great. Um, I have to apologize. I um, have to back up a little bit because I wanted to review the process, and I, I'm sorry I, I jumped right to looking at the goals. But just um, and again, we did this in in June. Um, in terms of the process, it did come up about Brooke's self-evaluation. Mike, it was over the course of last year where Brooke uncovered the fact that we had a huge problem in the area of safety. Brooke spoke to um, feedback in her um, evaluation as well as other data that inform the development of a communication role. And so um, that's what it, she uses to form the, uh, the annual plan. Additionally, she selected 
um, um, uh, elements. I can yeah. Yeah, elements from the uh, the standards for evaluation that she wants to focus on, and we'll report out on those. And those were the things that we saw um, last year. Um, after we talk about uh, communication, um, we will um, uh, talk about. Um, um, acceptance of the goals or if there are any other changes we want to make. So, I'm sorry. And if I, can, if I can just add to, you know, I think there are other things that happen in your world as a superintendent throughout the course of the year that even though this is a, uh, an area of focus for you, it isn't the only area right. of focus. And I think that that's really critical. Like I, I was teasing the other day, like, <coughs> for example, when that SOI came through, I, nobody could have told me how much work that thing was going to take. That should have been one entire year worth of work because it was so extensive. Like the amount of research, the amount of bringing the different players to the table to find out details, and it wasn't an area that you could you could make mistakes in. Like you just there were no mistakes that could be allowed on that. You know. So when you have things like that come up, this this is a. This is a piece of the work, but it's not the daily work, and it's not the unanticipated things that happen in your world. I mean, for example, like I, either way, whatever happens, um, you know, with MSBA on that SOI, whether we get, uh, you know, accepted to, to queue up or not, you're gonna have to make a decision. Do we do this again next year? Let's say we don't. Let's say we don't get queued up. Uh, then the school committee is gonna have to make a decision. Well, you know what? We're gonna resubmit. I will go back to the table then. That's not on here, but there are some other things that have come up that we've already talked with MSBA that I'll now articulate on the new and approved SOI going forward. But we know that the SOI that I've submitted, we can resubmit. But that's just a, that's just an example of other things that come up in your world that you just haven't seen coming at all that, that take copious amounts of your time. Um, uh, on the, the first, the, the goal that we were waiting for the development on um, is the um, communication goal. We saw the plan. Um, I didn't know if looking at the, um, the goal in the superintendent's annual plan chart, if there was anything that anybody wanted to um, ask questions about or comment on. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I did want to um, I, I think we talked about this at, at PSC um, about particular to this, it would be all the, the things that encompass this plan wherever possible to collect data about when we talked about the, um, the retweeting and all that, uh, that other stuff. Yes. So um, I don't want to hold this up, but I would like some, um, and, and please let me know if what you folks think. Um, just a listing of some ways to uh, collect data um, because it's, it is, it might be some point of a challenge to determine whether or not it's successful. I mean, you can say, oh, we did this, we did this, we did this, but then what's the so what? And um, I don't know if there could be follow-up surveys to parents, staff, um, administrators, um, but that's the part that I personally think needs more development in terms of, of outcomes. Now, I don't think it's a deal breaker to approve these, but um, just in terms of when we come to the table, because the next time we see this, once we approve these, will be in January, January. Um, for an update. And so that's the type of thing it would be good, good to, to bring see. Forward, yes. And then for the end, it helps us in terms of writing the evaluation to have that type of specific data. So that, that's a great point about the, uh, the retweeting and um, you know after and I'll go back to because the Stowe meeting was the first parent meeting and I saw a definite uptick in number of Twitter followers <laughs> you know yeah. and I, I saw and I was saying at the personnel subcommittee meeting that that's one of the things you, if you really want to watch a retweet watch when the school closure thing starts to <laughs> and watch the number of times that those things get retweeted. But you know, it's interesting. Um, at 
the football game the other night, there was just a wonderful picture of uh, Casey Hool, our SRO, with kids as they were tailgating before the game. And it was just such a great picture. And I said, can you send that to me right away? I'm going to tweet it out. It, it was like all that evening and into about 1 o'clock in the morning, I just kept hearing it ping, 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 as it kept being retweeted. And so there are moments like that you just, I'm very appreciative. And I appreciate the follow. Right now I have about, about in that five number neck of the woods for followers so mm -hmm. it, it, and it's but t I don't live or die by Twitter I don't do it every day um, it, it's something I try to do a couple of times a week you know as we, or if something big is happening I try never to advertise the only thing I generally advertise is when we as we get close to the Thanksgiving football game that's probably just the, about the only time so otherwise I would be doing that all the time and that's not what the it's intended for that site really is just intended to say uh, here's a showcase of our district. Here's some key things that are happening across. And I try to pick and pull from whether it's fine arts, whether it's robotics or drone flying or uh, choirs that are performing or the football games or uh, volleyball or whatever is happening. So I try to do a, a mixture so people just have a flavor of what's going on in the district. But I think that that's a great point, Kathy, and I think that I can bring some of that forward. Okay, and maybe we can talk about it more maybe at PSC or something, because I think that um, we may, it may show us where we're trailblazing in some yeah. areas, um, the feedback that we get, and let us know, you know what's on the right track and, and what needs more development. Mm -hmm. Any, any other feedback or comments? Oh, I was just saying, in that vein, something I love that MASK does, the Massachusetts Association School Committees for anybody watching, um, is like every time you go to a presentation or every time you have an interaction with them, you get an email or a flyer that says like, how did we do? What did you like? What would you like to see better? One through five, just bam, here you go. Mm -hmm. And they, it really makes you feel that your feedback is- Valued. Valued, yes, wanted, um, and then I'm assuming they do things with that because they're doing a great job mm -hmm. in general. Um, but you know, like we're doing safety nights, we're doing things where we're interacting with the community, and it seems like it would be, a, or even intra district, it would be an option. Yeah, that was a good idea. More data. Okay, well, at our meeting on the 19th, the PSC uh, did vote to bring forward the superintendent's goals, and so as part of our oversight of this process, uh, we're required to approve the superintendent's. Uh, annual plan. Um, so, would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, I move to approve the superintendent's annual plan as written. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you, everyone. So now we are going to uh, committee reports. So, uh, Steve, um, budget and warrant. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot something. <laughs> As we're all, we're all that point to that one. No, I just did that on purpose. Let's see if I can pay attention because obviously I'm zoning out. Okay. So the other thing that we have to do is um, approve our overarching goals for the upcoming school um, year. Um, these were developed originally. Um, I think last year we were working on, and they're actually up here. We have our operating protocols and our overarching um, goals, and so um, we um, reviewed them. We are <coughs> going to review them every year, so on at the PSC meeting on 9-19, we reviewed them, and we kept them as is. The biggest change was the uh, goal that was number five was elevated to number one and uh, we just move them down accordingly. So I didn't, if does anybody have any questions or anything they want to edit or consider? I'll just mention that goal, goal number five, uh, you know. Uh, the uh, new five or the old five? The old five. Okay, which, which is, is now number new, one. Num number one. Okay. I, I think that the school committee, um, last year's school committee did a lot of work in this area and I think has really moved us far along in, in with this. Um, I, I feel that 
moving forward this year, I, I'm not asking you to change, change any of the language, but I really do see this year's work being not nearly as extensive as the last year in, in pulling all of these reports. I mean, I just think to the Finance Subcommittee, the B&W Committee, and the amount of work that that took to get that all pulled together for reports and such, and saying what are going to be our regular reports, what can we anticipate, and and we actually we kind of said that same thing tonight actually in B&W, you know, it's just, it's so much easier now because these have been, they've become regular reports for us right now. And we all know that Pat is going to report out in the second meeting of the month. We all know that she will bring us the, you know, the money in the bank, so to speak, and expenditures. And we, so it, I think we've really come to a, just a really healthy place with this. So I, I don't want people to look at number five and say, gee, I thought that they were already, they already did this. So, you know, I think that this is ongoing work for us. Any other comments, questions? The only comment I have is that um, I really like that you moved the old five to the new one. Well, that was the new five, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Because it's not that all of these overarching goals are not important and critical to our work, but I really do think that that sort of what's now number one, um, you know, and talking about engaging our communities and our vision, and that it's, you know, a strong district is our strongest asset as community, yeah. really is, you know, kind of sums up everything that we're trying to do as a school committee, and it's nice to see that right at the time. I think we, we'd agree too. Any other comments? Steve? Yeah. You want me to comment on the budget more? Not yet, because we yet. have to approve the overarching goals. <laughs> oh, that's right. I need a motion for, to approve the overarching goals for this year. I move to approve the overarching goals for the school committee for this year. Second. Second. Steve, all in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Now, now Steve, go. We had a relatively brief meeting this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> and uh, one of the things, I mean, we, we, we looked at, uh, you know, Improving our minutes from the previous meeting, which we did, we uh, we looked at the uh, treasurer's report. We looked at the uh, budget reports. We'll see next week, next at the next meeting. But one of the things we we I think we all tended to agree on at the meeting was that with the new reporting structure of the reports that we wanted, um, things should go much smoother this year and not be as I want to see time consuming on the, on the point of the budget and warrant subcommittee, mm -hmm. uh, but also as stressful as it's been in the past. We've, uh, I mean, last year we moved a lot, a long distance from where we were previously, right. and this year we've moved a long distance, or hopefully to uh, where we're going to be. Um, the administration develops the budget. We <coughs> look at it, we examine it, we question it, we tell them where we think there can be cuts. And it should be a relatively easy process this year. The and process, forward. not the, yeah. Process. Not necessarily the battles, but yeah. the process. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that's that's it for budget and water. Very good. Yeah. And I would agree, too. I, I think that this year, even just involving our principals already, again, they, they already knew going into the summer. Okay, yeah, we're already starting to talk about next year. And so I, I would agree, even I, I anticipate a much smoother process this year because it'll be our third year now. We are not reinventing that wheel anymore. It just feels so different, so, so different. Thank you. Um, personnel report. Um, well, we um, recommended the, to bring forward the superintendent's annual plan to the school committee and just approve the goals. Uh, the next couple of meetings we'll be working on looking at the school committee manual that was uh, developed <coughs> last year and we're looking at it to see if there needs to be any updates or revisions so we'll be that's working another on perfect that example now. i mean right. the amount of work that went into that manual for two years yeah. i mean and now here we sit and we can review right. and like again another feel good moment like, that we're at that point yeah. um i don't know does did was this policy have anything to report? Susan um, is not here, but I don't know if anyone, she calls anyone to give a report. Maybe there are no updates. I don't think there so. There are no updates. Okay. And then um, CPAC, um, the, on uh, October 2nd at 7 p.m. at Emerson, um, no, at uh, Sawyer. 
there will be a, a workshop where folks can come and meet the PPS director, John DeAngelis. And then on um, October 9th at 7 p.m., again at Sawyer, um, CPAC will have their first business meeting over here. Um, communication advisory? <coughs> sure. So um, at our last meeting, we started sort of brainstorming and mapping out what we wanted our communications plan. So this is so dovetail <laughs> with what you all are talking about. Um, what we wanted our strategy to be in terms of school committee. And one of the things we talked about that was really important is upfront and being very clear about this when we're communicating with our communities is clarifying the role of the school committee and versus the role of the administration yeah. and the ways that we communicate and the types of things that we communicate. Um, and also clarifying expectations for people similar to, to what you guys are talking about with you can expect to get an email within 24 to 48 hours. You know, making sure um, we have some of those things obviously in place already for school committee, but we really want to formalize them and say, if you email somebody, your rep from your community, you should expect to hear from them within this window. If you email the entire school committee, you know, it is likely you will hear from the chair, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what happens. Yes. And if it's a, you know, these are the types of things that we can answer, these are the types of things that might need to go to the administration, and just sort of broadly, but to give people a sense, what do you, what should you expect when you reach out to us, yeah. and what happens? Um, and the other thing that we started talking about was the school committee portion of the website, and making that clear for people, and we were just sort of talking about, oh, we need to, you know, reach out and see if we can get analytics or find out some more about what we can do and like magic assistant superintendent McGuire walked into the room <laughs> and it was like literally we just started talking about the website and we really need to maybe see if we get Todd in here at some point and he just appeared um I do that so. from time to time <laughs> that's a gift Shazam it was really fantastic because we got to immediately um hear about plans for updating the website and um one of the things that we are going to do as a communication subcommittee is make a little bit of a wish list uh, that we're going to talk about at our next meeting coming up this Friday. For, if we could have anything in the world on the school committee website, what would it look like? We're, gonna, we're spending some time looking at other school committee portions of school district websites so we can then give that feedback to the team working on this website and say, here's what we would like. Um, once we have that list, we will bring that to the full school committee. Um, so that you all can provide input and feedback and anything that we might have forgotten, and then that will go to um, the superintendent and assistant superintendent so they can hopefully make all our dreams come true. <laughs> Super, <laughs> sounds great. Can I, can I just bring that on that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, one of the things, uh, you, it just made me think of it as I was listening to you speak, um, one of the things that we also realize is that a lot of times, and this also generated at a CPAC in some ways, but people don't always know where to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really what you're saying. I mean, you're talking more about the clarification because that's huge between a school committee and administration. And I think sometimes uh, the general public is confused on that or tries, maybe there's some gray area. There really is a gray area. It is pretty black and white. But who tells you that? Who explains that to you, right? right. And it isn't until really you start sitting around this table and they say, Oh, now I, now I see how these roles play out, you know, because the roles are very, very different. With that in mind, though, when looking uh, through the CPAC lens, and it got us thinking about the district at large, although we've talked about it before, who do we go to? Like, who do we go to first? Where does this communication start? And so um, Joan DeAngelis and, and uh, Alita mapped out a really nice uh, communication tree. Uh, we're, we're, it's it's a draft. We're still working at it. But I looked at it and I thought, you know, this is really a terrific idea if we take this, like whether it's CPAC or special needs, and or what about if it's just Johnny Smith in grade two and and mom and dad are upset about X. Where do they take that complaint to or that concern to or how do they find the who do they connect with? So I thought, you know, probably what what you'll see as part of the communication plan now is a series of community communication trees come out so that everybody kind of knows well, this is what you need to do, this is what you can go to, and this is what you can expect. You know? In some some ways, although you're not really saying this, but I'll say this, in some ways, um, some of the things that go to certain areas, people can't help them, and so they have to kind of go to a different, so there needs to be a redirect, and um, I think that that's all important for parents.
hands to understand. But the bottom line is when you get to wherever that redirect is, there needs to be a yes, no type thing, answer that comes out, something concrete that you can say, oh, so we can't do this, or oh, I can do this if I go, there's no more maybes right. along the way. And, uh, you know, so, of course, we always hope that we're getting to a win-win or a yes, yes type thing. And that's the ultimate goal. I don't know that we always get there, but we try to. So I appreciate very much the work that your communications committee is doing right now. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for those thank comments. You. I think that's helpful to have a, a visual and a yes. path to follow. Okay. Uh, no reports from audit advisory or emergency response task force. Um, uh, correspondence? No. Mm -hmm. Might I just add, emergency task force, I think you you did meet though this month, right? I, th I don't think you have anything to report uh, right Monday. now. But oh, you're meeting on Monday? Monday oh, okay, yeah. thank you. I, w I couldn't recall. My apologies for that. Thanks. Yeah. Take a look at that flip chart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, consent agenda, any feedback for the minutes? Should it be given to Alita? Is that consent agenda all set? Okay. Um, items to be considered for next agenda on the uh, initiatives calendar, uh, we'll be moving into October, um, the FY20 budget timeline, transitions program update, uh, school choice recommendation, uh, report from food services and HR, pupil services. Uh, Richfield, have you chunked this out yet? With, um, no, we haven't chunked okay. it out, but this, this is for the month of October. That's right, you're right. October. Yeah. Is there anything else that folks would like to see on the agenda for October at this point? Um, we will want to be, once we put together our recommendations. For communication. For communications, it, it, but I think we can probably do that during a communications update. I don't think Okay. No. Time I don't expect not to be controversial to know right now. that we're going to need 20 we minutes to discuss know. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but once we have our meeting this Friday, um, I can let Lorraine know and okay. I think we'll need more time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, um, sorry, this isn't for okay. October, but the, the digital learning update. Is that November? I don't see it on here. No, the digital uh, the digital literacy and digital learning is December. We oh, okay. originally scheduled actually for December nineteenth. Um, we may be able to move it up, but you'll see it's in the December. Uh, oh, okay. All yeah, along we had to aim for the December nineteenth, and that's I think that's even probably the goal that's mm -hmm. in the plan. Um, but we've got uh, certainly a lot of good work done on yep. that. If we can do it sooner, we will. But right now, the 19th is That's fine. I just didn't that. see that for some reason in my head yeah. from earlier. I was like, it's November. Yeah. OK. Is there anything else? Comments? Questions? I make a motion that we adjourn. I was just going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Steve, second. We, oh, sorry, we didn't go to the minutes. No, no, that's part of the consent agenda. Oh, OK, we did. See, I'm clearly spacing out. How about you second that <laughs> second. motion to adjourn? Okay, Elise. All right, all in favor? Aye. Very Thank good. You. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Um.